Continuing with our piping model, we want to add a support to the piping model, and then we will build a structural frame that we can connect our support to from our piping. We want to add the support, a spring hanger, six inches away from the elbow point A10N. In order to insert a point nine inches before A10N. Remember that length dimensions are always taken from the tangent point of a bend. Also, remember that each segment has a direction, which can be viewed by looking at the segment tab of the input grid. When inputting a component, the default is that the component will be inserted after the active point. The user can change the input in order to insert the component before the active point if necessary, which is what we'll do here. So with A10 as your active point, let's insert a run. By default, Autopipe always works in the forward direction of the segment. And if there's piping already in that direction, by default, Autopipe will actually just add a run point halfway along that pipe. You can always change the length of the pipe or how many points are added. We also can always change the direction of where the point is going to be added. In this case, we want the point to be added before point A10. And we want the length to be 1.25 feet away from the tangent point at A10, or 6 inches in front of point A10N. So I'm going to change the length to 1.25 feet. It knows the direction already, so automatically updates the DX offset. And we can click OK. We now see our point A25 just a little bit in front of point A10N. Autopipe will continue to count up from the last point on any segment, which is where point A25 comes from. At any point, we can renumber each individual segment or the entire piping model. We now need to add a spring hanger at point A25. So with it selected as our active point, let's come up to Insert Ribbon and Support. In the Support dialog box, we can select our support type as spring. We have the ability in Autopipe to run a spring hanger analysis and have the program design our spring, but in this case we are going to design it ourselves. So let's uncheck the option for undesigned and tab down to our cold load, which will enter in as 523.5 pounds. When we press tab, we have the ability to insert the size. Both the size and figure inputs when inserting a spring are optional. They're not necessary for the calculation, but they're helpful for modeling the support because they'll be printed in the reports. In this case, we know our size is size 7. Our spring rate is 224 pounds per inch. And we know our figure is figure 82. So we'll plug that in there to help our support designers. When we're ready, we can click OK, and we see our variable spring hanger come into the model at point A25. Next, we want to begin to build a frame made out of four W8 by 24 structural beams. Autopipe has the SAD Pro section library built in. However, the only section that's actually loaded into the model by default is a rigid element. And we can see this by opening our input grid. If you've closed it like I did, you can open it by coming to View, Input. And I'm going to scroll over and click on the Section ID tab. In this tab, we see that the only Section ID loaded in by default is a rigid element. In order to use any other section type in this piping model, we first must load it into the model. Once it's loaded in, it will be shown in this section ID tab of the input grid, and then this section type can be used to model in this particular model. We can load in a section type by coming to our insert ribbon and coming over to beam section properties. This is a standard selection, so we'll click on the select button. This loads the STAD section profile database. We are going to be working with an American W shape, and we'll scroll down 
until we see our W8 by 24. We can select the W8 by 24 and click OK. This loads the W8 by 24 section type, section dimensions, and section properties into the beam section properties dialog box. And we can select our material in the bottom right corner, which we'll leave as steel. Once this is loaded in, we can click OK. And we'll now see the W8 by 24 section type in the section ID tab of the input grid. Because we see it here, we can now use it to model our frame. Please make sure you refer to the workbook to see an example of the frame that we will build. We'll start with point three, which is directly above point A25. This is the easiest point to get the global coordinates up. So we can get the global coordinates of point A25 by making sure it's selected as our active point and clicking on View, Point Properties. The Point Properties dialog box will have all of the information about this specific point. And what we're interested in here is the global coordinates, X, Y, and Z. The X and the Z will be the same for our point three. And we're just going to make point three, three feet above point A25. So our Y coordinate will be three feet. It's a good idea to take a note down of this information. Then we can close out of the point properties dialog box. We can begin to insert our first beam by clicking on insert beam. And we'll define our beam ID as M1. Our from point will be three. We need to enter in those global coordinates of point three. Notice our units are in feet. So our X is 13.75 feet, our Y is three feet, and our Z is zero feet. Then we're gonna go 2.4, and the offset from three to four is five feet in the negative Z direction. So I'll tab down to my DZ and put in my negative five feet. I'll select my section ID as that W8 by 24, and we'll leave the rest as defaults for now unless we see that we need to change something. So we can click OK. We see our beam M1 above the pipe starting directly above point A25 at point 3. And the beam is rotated correctly. We can continue on. Let's select point A25 again as our active point And insert our second beam by coming to insert beam. This time for beam M2, we'll start from point four. When we press tab, our global coordinates are automatically updated because now that's an existing point in our model. So we can simply tab down to the two point J input, which will be point five. And our offset is down 10 feet. So let's tab to our DY offset and plug in our negative 10. Again, our section ID is W8 by 24, and we'll leave the rest as default inputs. We can click OK, and we see our M2 beam come into the model, correctly rotated. Let's model the second half of our structural frame. Again, let's select A25 as our active point. Come to the insert ribbon and beam. Now we're modeling beam M3, which will start at point three. AutoPipe updates the global coordinates. We'll be going to point two. And this is going to travel five feet in the positive Z direction. We can click OK and we see beam M3 come into the model. Let's model our last beam. Select A25 as your active point. Insert your beam M4 starting at point two going 2.1 down 10 feet. And we can click OK to accept this. Once we have the beams modeled to create our frame, we want to actually anchor the frame to the ground. So we can select both points one and five and add in both anchors at the same time. We can do that by holding control. So hold control down on your keyboard Click on point one, you should see the point one name change to red. Continue holding control. Click on point five, 
you should see the point five name also changed to red. That means that they are both now selected. So you can release your control button, come up to your insert ribbon, click on anchor, and accept it as default. You should see both anchors come in at the same time. You always have the option to add them in individually also. The last thing we want to do to complete our piping model is to connect our piping to our structure through our spring support. So we want to connect this spring support 2.3 directly above it. So we can do that by double clicking on our spring. You can select it by clicking once and then double click to open the spring support dialog box. And in the connected to input, by default, our supports are connected to ground. But in this case, we want to connect it to point three. So let's type in three. We can accept that by clicking OK. And you now see the support going from point 825 on the pipe, connecting to point three on the structure. We can now go to view defaults. We can clear our selection by clicking on our select ribbon and clear. And we can then do a file save. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.